from when you begin your teenagehood, life begins to take on a different meaning. And you have what I call perennial questions. Questions that if you are unable to answer them, life loses its meaning. But the moment you are able to answer these questions, life takes on a totally different meaning. It gives you an outlook of life that you may not be easily understood by an average human being. Your friends may not even understand because they are still having these questions inside of them and may not be able to approach anyone to ask. You see, as children, God put it inside of every one of us as children to be asking questions. It is the way that he designed us so that you can learn. That's why children are never tired of asking questions. Many times you feel upset. But today we are looking at these five questions that when you answer them, they give you real reason to be alive. Five questions that make life meaningful. How I put it here is five questions whose answer give meaning to life. They are perennial questions. They come like waves of the sea. They come like trend in London City. You know, as soon as one leaves, another one comes and, and you know, trend keep coming. They may come, you know, it, it may come with the same name. Western, Great Western service, it may be, it, it may be, you know, one of those lines, maybe they can do, but they come and go, they come and go, they come and go. That's how these questions nag in the recess of every man's heart. When I say man, every man, every woman, I mean human beings, we have these questions plague us. And do you know? Most people come into this world, eat all the corn, eat all the fish, have what is called good life, and then they get out of this world without answering these questions. Get busy with things that are totally destructive to their purpose in life. Get busy with things that are irrelevant to where they are going with these questions unanswered. How tragic can it be? This is a question that we all, I inclusive, we need to answer these questions. And let me give you number one. Who am I? <laughs> See, when you fix this puzzle, that is created by this question we are born with. This question that arises from our heart and comes to our head and you roll your eyes. What? Who am I? Now this is a very important question. That is why it is coming from within you. It comes from your belly. Who am I? The question is so important because any human being that does not solve this question of identity. Now permit me, I don't know if you can see there, but you know, there's so, there's so much that yellow ink can do. But what I've written here is the purpose of life. And that is how we are starting the school of life. If we don't understand purpose, then there's so much we can do in life. I mean, we won't even bother to understand the things we are doing and while we are doing them, we'll just do them because others have done them. So that question is about one thing and that is identity. When you don't answer this question of identity, you would rather wish 
you became every other person except yourself. You would wish you carry the levels that belong to other people. You would wish you wear t-shirts with other people's name. You want to be identified with what you call brand or what we call brand. The big brands. It makes you feel like you have an identity. Now, the camera you buy seeks to solve that problem when you don't answer this. When this puzzle is not fixed. When you don't answer the question of who am I? You attach whom you are to the kind of car you drive, to the, the kind of shoes you wear. Am I against wearing good shoes? Not at all. By the grace of God, I'm wearing one, one nice one here. But that's not what, that's not me. That doesn't make me. This nice suit I'm wearing does not make me. I make the suit because by the grace of God I've been able to solve this problem of answering. Who am I? And as we get along, you get to see how you also can answer this question. Listen, I am not one of those um, who were exceptionally good in schools, in, in, my, in my school days. And I can tell you why. Because I wanted to blend, because I was not particularly excited about life. You know, knowing this is my life. I didn't even know who was there to teach you. You are born into this world and whatever your parents were conditioned to. And I was blessed. I was blessed to have parents who for whatever reason they became committed to seeking God's face whether they knew how to do it well or not but they were committed to that and that rubbed off on me to a great extent well it did not change me until I made a commitment until one day I had an encounter that caused me to confront myself and I made a choice of my life. I'm grateful that I did that. That's one of the things we will look into. Now, you need to answer this question, who are you? Who are you? I have been able to answer this question and it's helping me a whole lot. I can never imagine, I can't think of being any other person. I don't want it. I can learn from you if you do great things. I can learn the principles of how you got it done. I can learn the methods, but I don't want to be any other person. I want to be myself because there's somebody unique. There's somebody exceptional. There's somebody great inside of me. And as we get along, you will see what I am saying. I'm the only one that can be the best I can be. Nobody else can be me. And I can't be the best of any other person. I can only be me. I mean, this should get you excited. The moment you solve this problem, it's a big problem all over the world. It does not respect skin color. It has no regard for whoever you are. This is one question you need to answer. Now, I am very careful about my choice of words. I did not say you want to answer. I said you need to. Or you may wish. No, I didn't say you may wish. I am saying you must. You need to. You need to answer this question. Who am I? Everybody, knowingly or knowingly, you have who you are. And it's so powerful to become aware that the me that I need to be to find satisfaction and fulfillment 
is not somewhere waiting for me. The person I need to become, I need to be, to impact my world, to influence my world, leaf footprints, golden footprints on the sands of time, is inside of me. And God did that for a purpose. He sent us here as unique creatures with abilities, with potential, with capability, with some unique qualities to be able to solve the problems of life. It may be mathematical, it may be linguistic, it may be kinesthetic, it may be in, in form of designs, it may be in, in, in various ways, engineering, but let's understand that you are somebody, you are somebody, you are somebody. I can't say that long enough. Now the number two question is, where am I from? <laughs> where am I from? That's the question of, I don't know if you can, if you can read that. Question of heritage. Where am I from? Now, it's so sad to find out that many people have put in every effort, used the strength that the Creator God gave to them to propagate the lie that there was something called the Big Bang. And now, uh, where have we ever seen in this world we live in? that duplicated, that there was a big bang and things began to be created. I'm here to find one. Whenever there is a bang, depending on how heavy it is, depending on how hard the bang is, there's always destruction. We're not here to talk about the Big Bang, but I am saying that you have a heritage that you need to find out. I'm not just talking about your family tree that traces you to your great-great-grandfather. Fantastic. If you're able to do that, there's, there's a feeling that brings. You know, it, 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 it shows to you that Truly, you came from somewhere. I'm yet to see one person who has been able to trace the family tree to some apes. We are yet to find one. But some people have put in all the energy, gone the extra mile, just to convince us that we came from some creatures that, you know, they imagine human beings came from. And my question always is, those creatures are still alive today. And they have been alive, some of them are capable of living for so long and they have not changed from their nature. They have not changed from what they are and evolved into something else. When will it ever happen? So what's the assurance that those things evolved into what they are today? What, what's the assurance that those things evolved into human beings? We know in its common knowledge, corn has never, because of age, because of time, changed into cucumber. Strange. Isn't that absurd? We know in our day that the wire birds, the canary, you know, the peacocks, they only reproduce themselves. Rat, they reproduce themselves. Horses reproduce themselves. Yes, there could be a question of crossbreeding. Human beings make that happen. But that has not changed the original species. They reproduce themselves. So 
if you allow just a human brain to view the thing practically, you see that there is some con conspiracy somewhere. There is some deliberate, calculated effort to get you confused and mixed up about your heritage. You came from somewhere that is beyond the physical. Your body is just a vehicle that is carrying the real you. This body has limitations. And that's why the Bible talks about we seeing what cannot be seen physically. It says, while we walk not by sight. So there are things that we cannot see. There's a level of life, there's a realm of life that you cannot see with the physical eyes, but that realm or those realms of life, they are true. They are real. Now think about this. God had to fine tune our ability to hear. So there's so much we can hear and that is to maintain our own sanity. God did that, did that so that we will be able to cope. We will be able to contain ourselves. If you ever hear as much as your dog is hearing, if you are able to hear as much as the cat is hearing, if you are able to hear as much as the dolphin is hearing, or you are able to hear as much as the rat is hearing, or the snake, or you are able to hear as much as the eagle is hearing, maybe you would have gone insane. So God fine-tuned, he tuned you so you are hearing is just for what you need to be a human being and not to be able to hear more than that. Even as I'm speaking, if for any reason, in fact, if I pick my smartphone and begin to touch some buttons, begin to search out some things, I'll be able to capture some videos that are passing here but I'm not seeing them because I have not tuned to that. I have not logged on to that station. So that will allow us to understand much more than, that should help us to understand much more than we are told. It's amazing the way we imbibe things without questioning without challenging things and we uphold these things for years. It's amazing. It's, it baffles me how we accept things without question. And we question as children and as you grow up, maybe at home, maybe at school, somebody is telling you you're asking too many questions. Somebody cannot cope with how much you want to know. Somebody or some people are not able to understand why you are asking. You didn't even understand why you were asking. But that now began to condition you because we naturally want to feel among. We want to belong. We want to be accepted. We run away from um, rejection. We don't want to be refused. We don't want to be rejected. And so you adapt, you blend, and that causes you not to ask questions as you would have needed to ask. Yes, there should be a question of, there should be an understanding of when to ask, and when to be quiet, when to listen, when to speak. So the timing, the maturity, should help you to know the timing, but should not stop you from asking why. Asking what is this? Asking where is this leading me to? So that takes us to the next place. So we have established two things. We have to fix the puzzle of identity. 
which is why we need to answer the question, who am I? Now, many people get into relationship because they think the other person will give them identity. See what I'm saying? And that's why we're having a lot of complications in relationship. It's one major reason. Because somebody is going there half or maybe one quarter of himself or herself or hasn't even discovered whom she is or who am I hasn't been able to answer that question. And so in the subconscious, the idea is, okay, when I find a woman that accepts me, that gives me identity, or I find a woman at this level that gives me an identity, or a man, a woman will say, when I get married to this kind of a man, that gives me an identity. No, you don't need that. That's one of the reasons people think that marriage is difficult is that the questions, the basic questions of life are not answered. And one of them is that of identity. Number two, we've talked about heritage. You have a heritage. You have your source, you have where you come from. And number three, why on earth am I here? Why on earth am I here? This is, these are the kind of things that we will be looking at in the school of life. Life must be much more than staying alive so I can pay my bills, so I can just raise children, so I can just get married, or just become popular, get known, and when I'm too known, maybe I don't know what to do with my life, I begin to walk half nude or sometimes try to even be stark naked just because I'm confused. I don't know what to do with the popularity. Now life has a different meaning and that's why we call this school of life. That's why we call this school of life. We want to be able to answer those basic questions of life. We want to be able to fix those puzzles. We want to be able to, to cause those confusions to leave you alone. We want you to get into awareness of why you are here on planet Earth. So this also is a question of number three. It's a question of purpose. And there's a quote that has become so popular and that is from a man God has used to make this subject so known to multiple thousands of people on planet Earth and that is Dr. Miles Monroe and he has this to say, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When you don't know the purpose of a squirrel, you will abuse it. You don't know the purpose of cocaine, you will abuse it. You don't know the purpose of a wife, you will abuse her. You don't know the purpose of children, you will abuse them. Even as a child, or oh, it's a teenager, or oh, as a grown-up person, you don't know the purpose of parents, you will abuse them. Or oh, you as a parent, or oh, let's talk about the, oh, you don't know the purpose of a pastor, you will abuse a pastor. Or oh, even as a pastor, if I don't know the purpose of the people God has put under my care, if I don't know their purpose and why they are brought, I'll abuse them. So this is a question we have to all answer for ourselves. That's concerning us. So if you don't know the purpose of your life, you will not only do just anything, it will be a whole lot of experiments, it will be wanting to do so many things, and yet there's still that hole on the inside of you. 
There's still that vacuum. There's still that emptiness. Because you've not been able to answer the question of why on earth am I here? You see